Hi. If you didn't know, I'm in Dresden. And also, if you didn't know, I actually have a bachelor degree in philosophy. And that is kind of the motivation behind the title of this video. I, for a really long time, wanted to say something or share some thoughts about my studies in philosophy and music as a pianist. At the same time, I don't know what to say. <laughs> so for a really long time, I just didn't say anything. But now that I've been in Dresden for a week, I actually have been very inspired about music, music performance, about the phenomenon of classical music. And I just want to say something or make a video about it. Also because this takes a lot less time for me to edit than if I were to edit a bunch of other footage that I've been filming here in Dresden. I really thought that I would have a lot more time and be able to edit and make a lot more vlogs, but it turns out I've just been so kind of overwhelmed in a good way by the inspiration that I've been getting from going to concerts. Except for yesterday, yesterday was my first night off. I went to six concerts in a row and I didn't vlog. I did some little clips here and there and you can see kind of the places that I've been to, but also my head is just so not in the social media realm. And that's why I didn't think that I would post anything on YouTube until two days ago, which is the newest video that you saw from me is the Sherpa Nocturne. I just walked into the practice room and I just had this urge to film something of my own playing. Uh, oh, also I'm sitting in a lot of trees, so you might hear a lot of birds and this might not be the best audio, but this is also just a really peaceful place. <laughs> Except for the gigantic uh, buses that kind of will walk past and honk once in a while. Anyway, what was I talking about? See, I am so not in the mind of vlogging that I don't remember my tripod. So I'm kind of holding my camera with my arm the entire time and I might just <laughs> be too tired by the end of this just from holding my camera. But okay, long spiel. I asked you guys what you wanted to know about my recording of the Sherpa Nocturne and I thought I might answer those questions first and then I will start a discussion on philosophy a little bit. A little bit, not quite. Because I don't want to be the one telling you things. I want this to be kind of a dialogue. So hold on, let me get my questions. All right, I picked four. First one is from SJJV. How long did it take for you to play this piece without sheets? I think a couple of days. But you see, when I was younger, I pretty much sight read every single Nocturne at some point in my life. <laughs> so I knew the piece from just sight reading it before and reading it through. And I think I actually learned this while I was practicing Rock 3 back in April. So I wasn't spending or focusing my entire energy practicing this one piece when I did work on this, but I think it took a couple of days for me to memorize it. Next question is from Anonymous Pianist. How many recordings did it take to record this specific one? Okay, here's a little behind the scenes story about this recording. After going to so many performances, I felt very unproductive. I know June 8th is happening and I did play for a couple minutes in one of the Bohem performances, which I think some of you saw in Kutupalast. I'll have a vlog out exactly what I did and I think it'll be interesting for you to see. But in general, I just felt like, oh, I want to play. I want to play for someone. I want to share music. Also, it's been such a long time since I've made any recordings for YouTube. So I felt kind of awkward because I don't want to be known as the one who just practices piano. I felt like I needed to show the world that I can actually play an entire piece and not just play snippets over and over again and mess up and practice and practice and practice. So I just had this urge to play music and share again. So that's why I decided to record it. But at the same time, this is not the kind of recording like the ones that I did before on my channel where I would be in a room for a really long time and I would have asked the piano to be tuned a certain way and I would have picked it and it would be very formal. This I just walked in, I always have my camera and mic with me because 
I've been vlogging and filming things, which eventually I'll have time to edit, just not now. <laughs> and so I walked in and I just felt like I needed to play something for you guys. So I decided to do the short by Nocturne because I remember I had a couple of requests. This was an extremely long answer to your question. I'll edit it down so it makes a little bit more sense. I'm just rambling. But I think this was probably my fourth time playing um, this piece. Although I realized the first three takes that I did, I played a wrong note the entire time. So this was technically just one take with the correct notes. And yeah, I just went for it. I didn't want to spend too much time recording it over and over again. Also, this piano is quite challenging for me to control because it is quite bright and it would be perfect for Baroque music. But for Chopin, it's a little bit trickier. So I didn't want to be frustrated recording and trying to perfect the recording so much. So I just decided to release this one, even though I basically just had one take. Yeah. That was a really long, long answer. Also, I'm sitting right in front of a bunch of people by the side, and I am a bit self-conscious. Anyway, so in the middle of recording, <laughs> apparently my camera shut off. So let me start again. The third and fourth questions are quite similar, so I'll just answer them together. Marshalyn Fernandez asks, what scenery do you see while playing this piece? And Emil asks, how do you develop your interpretations of pieces, especially for such emotional pieces? Uh, do I stay true to the sheet music, listen to other pianists, or have my own interpretations and stories that I try to convey? So I think these questions are very common, and I think this is why I think it's time for me to talk a little bit about philosophy and just my concepts of music, because it's really hard for me to describe in words how I come about interpreting a piece or playing a piece of music it's really hard for me to speak in words it's not a kind of scientific process where i do this and then i do this and then i do this and then here is the end result so to speak i don't think music is a sum of parts and now i find myself kind of priming you <laughs> your thoughts on this question that I really just want to ask you in this vlog, which is what do you think music is? I have my own thoughts from reading philosophers, but by philosophers I really just mean one author in particular, which I'll talk about in the next one. But for now, I just want to ask you guys what you think music is. Because for me, it's a lot of things not in the practical sense. Oh gosh, see, it's really hard for me to explain this. I don't see any particular story or scenery. It's not like I am following a specific novel <laughs> with uh, specific characters and scenes and then translating that into music. It's not like an opera, if you know what I mean. I just play it and I know what I want from the tone, from the voicing and phrasing, more or less, still working on it especially with rubato but i just kind of have this intuition that i try to follow and bring the full picture in my execution did i answer your question oh well, you also ask if i listen to other pianists and if i stay true to the sheet music i mean of course i adhere or abide by certain conventions of playing a certain area of music so i would never play romantic music in staccato the way that I might for Baroque, for example. Of course, I follow the sheet music. <laughs> and of course, there are also small instances where you can kind of bend the rules a little bit. I didn't really listen to other pianists for this particular nocturne because I just had an idea of what I wanted right away. Yeah, I definitely was in a certain mood that was quite similar to the one that I think the nocturne kind of brings about. But that's not to say that I was dictated primarily by that emotion. That could sound really depressing, but... No, I mean, it's really just hard for me to answer questions like this because it's all very non-verbal and theoretical. Not even theoretical, it's just a whole phenomenon that you can't really explain in words. It just comes about. And I hope it was successful, what I was trying to convey with the Nocturne. 
But for now, I just really want to end this vlog before I go practice literally right there. Oh wait, right there. <laughs> what you think music is? I think this would be a very interesting question for you to reflect on. If you don't understand why I asked this question, in philosophy, pretty much every time you encounter or discuss any topic, the first thing you ask, which is the Socratic method, is what is X? So if you want to talk about chair, what is a chair? What is chair? And then you can think about a million things about the concept of chair, the form of chairs, what's the relation between chairs in the world and chair. Anyway, that's why I want to start with this basic question as an entry into a more philosophical discussion or just discussion in general. I don't know. I hesitate to call this a philosophical discussion because I am no Kant or Hegel or Socrates. I'm not a philosopher, but I did study philosophy in college at Columbia and I do have a bachelor degree. So I guess it gives me a little bit of a license to talk about philosophy and bring it up. So comment below what you think music is. I'll be very interested in hearing your thoughts and I will comment on them in my next one. I think this would be a much more interesting way to talk about philosophy than me saying, hello guys, I think this is this and X and Y and Z and these are all of my thoughts because that's just not very interesting for me to just tell you from one perspective. I think it'd be much more interesting to have multiple perspectives and have me comment on them instead. So I will wrap up this vlog now because I have to go practice. I'm going to Munich tomorrow. So I'll show you a bit of my practicing a little bit, just like a snippet, but I'm going to wrap it up here officially. Keep striving and I'll see you next time somewhere in Munich or here or Instagram. If you want to follow me for more live updates, I post a lot on stories and you can kind of follow around and see what I'm up to here in Germany. I've been talking for 18 minutes. That's way too long. <laughs> okay. Bye. Keep striving. Thanks for watching.